Today I'm talking about rust effects for D&D miniatures, or heck, any miniatures at all. These are effects that are relatively easy to do and use common, inexpensive supplies. Now, the King of Random did do a video about combining cinnamon and superglue, and boy, there were a lot of comments about safety precautions. So, with a tiny amount of super glue like I'm using in this video generally, you're going to be fine as long as you don't touch it and you have good ventilation. However, if you're going to be using large amounts of super glue under any circumstances, it is vital that you have eye protection, excellent ventilation, gloves, and you probably should be wearing a mask, especially if you're going to be combining more than a tiny amount of super glue with literally anything else. Now, if the random machine bits seem familiar, it's because they are from my Goodwill by the Pound Find, where I found a bunch of educational toys that were still on the sprue. So this control piece is the simple but uh, expensive way of doing things. I painted this with Citadel Technical, Typhus Corruption, and Riza Rust. So you get a nice, very uh, fine, detailed look with this. Say what you will about Games Workshop, they make a fine technical product. But what if you want something with a little bit more obvious detail, something that really looks rusted and degrading to the point where there's minerals and rust just kind of bulging up from the metal? Well, then a lot of crafters actually just use regular cinnamon. The cinnamon gives a very nice texture, and that's what I'm interested in. Some people use this for actual coloration, but I'm really not interested in the color. I'm more interested in the very fine grains of cinnamon. So I tried this a couple different ways. First off, I put the cinnamon down first, and then I poured the super glue on it, and then I kind of poked it around with the cinnamon. You get pretty much the average dry time of the super glue, so you can kind of poke around it a little bit. What I found worked better is if you put down the super glue first, and then kind of sprinkle cinnamon on top of it. And then you can also poke and prod and give little bits of texture in extra places if you want. That seems to work out a lot better. And I pretty much did that for the rest of the pieces. For the first two pieces with the cinnamon, I used regular super glue. And then I just kind of, uh, for the best bits, I kind of just put cinnamon on top of it, let it dry, and then I washed away the cinnamon that didn't cure. For the big piece here with baking soda, I decided to go with super glue gel and I kind of clumped it up and then sprinkled the baking soda all over it and I really liked the huge bulging texture that gave me. Obviously if you're looking for a finer texture, uh, this ain't it. This is how people generally get like really nice like snow effects. Obviously if you've been in the hobby business at all, you know how uh, super glue and baking soda can accelerate how super glue cures and also make it very strong and bulky. So people use this for snow effects, they use it for fixing things. So yeah, I gave the same paint job to both of these, uh, to all three of these actually, uh, a nice dry brush of metallic. Uh, so that would show up underneath the paint a little bit. And then afterwards, I dry brushed with uh, dark brown, dark red, and then I got progressively more lighter orange. I think this paint job, I don't think maybe I needed to be this, uh, use this many shades, but I think it would definitely help if you started off with a very dark brownish red, and then you could just do a paint, uh, then you could just do a dry brush of the very light orange to get a very similar effect to what I got. But I really liked this paint job. It's just dry brushing, and you can see where the little grains of cinnamon really got picked up on these two pieces. And you can see where the nice bulging effect that you got from the gel and the baking soda really made this look just incredibly rusted. These pieces look like they've been underneath the ocean for years and years. And you can definitely tell the difference between the Citadel uh, style and my homebrew style here. Obviously, you could clump on more Typhus Corruption if you wanted more detail. But frankly, if you're doing a lot of these, this is a cheap, very interesting option for getting different types of texture. But again, you can't really, if you want the tiny, minuscule detail that will look good on uh, Warhammer models, obviously the Citadel stuff is pretty good. But for stuff like this, where I would just want D&D terrain, and I want it big, and I want it bulky, and I want it, the uh, players to immediately know, oh, we're someplace where like this is just 
rotting machinery is just everywhere. I really think I nailed it with these two techniques. If you want more big and bulky rust, then use baking soda, but if you want just a little bit of fine detail rust, then cinnamon works really well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned because I'm going to be doing some more Goodwill by the Pound videos to show off the stuff that I found, as well as show off all the D&D stuff that I made from it. Have a great day, and as always, thank you for watching the video. Bye.